Hello, this is Don O'Malley with Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Thanks for tuning in. Today we have part three of Dick Tracy's G-Men, starring Ralph Burt. Now, Ralph Burt also starred in the TV show Dick Tracy that ran from September 1950 to April 1951. He also starred in two other movie serials. So here we go with Dick Tracy's G-Men, part three. I'll be back. Wait a minute. We have a flat tire. Oh, come on, we'll take this cab. Penitentiary and make it snappy. Yes, sir. I wonder where this driver thinks he's going. Driver. Put your hands up and stand back. Get moving. Brody, get that cab out of here. Yes, sir. So, the clever Mr. Tracy is honoring me with a visit. It was thoughtful of you to bring along your superior. Welcome, Mr. Anderson. This is indeed an unlooked-for pleasure. 
Don't be so pleased with yourself, Zarnoff. There are plenty of other agents capable of filling our places. Our death won't save you. Do you think I'm fool enough to have you killed now? As long as you're alive and my prisoner, your friends will think twice before they attack or try to trap me. No, Mr. Tracy. You shall live exactly as long as I find it to my advantage to let you live. His Excellency is here. Gag them. I've been waiting for you, Baron. Zaroff, you have failed us several times lately. My government has lost confidence in you. Now, this man Tracy... Will interfere with me no longer. What do you mean? Simply that I am now in a position to operate freely and without Tracy's interference. That'll hold him. Come on. The government has a very delicate mission for you. One that is of the utmost importance to us. Look. I've heard of the torpedo. The Navy has great confidence in its long-range striking possibilities. <laughs> Rightly so. I have information, definite information, that this torpedo is far superior to any similar weapon held by any other country in the world today. My country must have it. Go on. The Navy Department has anticipated that an attempt will be made to steal the plans of the torpedo, so they have placed the plans at their headquarters under heavy guard. However, the original plans are still at the home of Wilson, the inventor. You're sure of that? Absolutely. My source of information is not to be questioned. I see. It won't be difficult to get the plans, Excellency. However, it'll be a different matter to get them out of the country. The minute they are missed, the authorities will guard every airport, Highway, railroad, and seaport, while the police search the cities. But suppose they are not missed. By making photostatic copies of the plans and leaving the originals intact, they will not be missed, and your country will get the information it desires. Why, that's an excellent suggestion. You'll have the plans by morning. Good. Good evening, gentlemen. I hope you're not too uncomfortable. Check their ropes. Okay, let's go.
take a look at the G-Man. His name's Wilson. One moment, operator. Sterling 2070. Sterling 2070. Hurry, please. Remember the address. Shall I answer it? No. Let it ring. No answer. Fall police headquarters. Had them send a flying squad to Wilson's home at once. Trails down up if he leaves before help gets to you. Steve, get to the nearest phone and tell the police to send some men over to Wilson's. I'll stay here with these birds. Right. You phone from the house down the road. I'll take this car.
can slow down a bit now. Okay, we'll be at the cabin in about two hours. You're mighty lucky you're not dead. What's the idea of racing like that? I'm Tracy, FBI. Oh, sorry, Mr. Tracy. Can we help? Yes. That man in the other car was Zarnoff. Zarnoff? Have you a radio? Yes, sir. Calling police headquarters. Calling police headquarters. Car number 14, calling police headquarters. Police headquarters, come in, 14. This is Dick Tracy, FBI. Zarnoff is headed west on route number 77 in a station wagon, licensed California 2C6550. Repeat, California 2C6550. His present approximate position, 10 miles east of Sautonville. Block all roads leading out of this area. Any questions? No, we got it. Relay this information to Anderson, chief of the FBI, now at my office. That is all. We're completely hemmed in. Turn off and stop. There's a hidden trail that crosses these hills to the hideout. If we hurry, we can make it before sunrise. The water's cold. Yeah, they must have been gone several hours. Afraid so. Steve, here are their tracks. The trail should be easy to follow. It's plain enough. Stop it, you fools! You go on up and stay with the man. Rex Airport, come in. I'm at Hidden Valley. Bring the plane at once. Have enough fuel to carry me across the border. I give the signal. All right, scatter. Sarnoff. 
I'll find some other way to get in the valley. You keep them busy. in trouble. Go see to it. I'll stay here. Zarnoff. It looks as if we're going to have to walk. No telling how far it is to the nearest town. We better get going. trees are greener. There might be water there.
Goodbye, Mr. Tracy. Keep thinking how good that water would taste if you could only reach it. I'll explain later. Get me out of these cuffs. Zarnoff has a big head start. There's a slim chance that we can catch him. Dick, don't drink that water! But Zarnoff just drank from this pool. Well, you... Come on. Sure didn't get far. It's funny, Steve. One way or the other, they always get it. Well, Zarnoff will no longer menace the peace of the world. Before I return to Washington, I wish to say these few words. No criminal can outwit an organization that goes on forever, whose members never rest. Agent Tracy, will you stand? What are your immediate plans? Well, sir, nothing important. A week's vacation, and then I... Well, a vacation is always important. Rest fast, Tracy. There's an assignment waiting for you tougher than any you've ever had. You'll find the details written here. You mean I... Tracy, Supervisor in Charge, West Coast Division, FBI. You are herewith relieved of your present duties and will immediately assume the title and office of Assistant to the Director in Charge of all FBI activities in these United States of America.
Got it. Now, don't let anyone touch the body or anything around it. We'll be right there. Joe, send a squad car. Hello, Tracy. Tracy isn't here. This is Pat Patton. We'll try to find him, Pat. It's important. Homicide. 2240 Lakeview Road. Okay, I'll see what I can do. It's murder, he says. Does that mean Mr. Dick Tracy won't have dinner with me tonight at all? Oh, sure, sure, Tess, you lead. Mm-hmm, that sounds very much like something Dick said nearly four hours ago. Well, at least you got this far. This far? I'm not engaged to a major to homicide squad. <laughs> Why didn't I fall in love with a retired businessman? I'll get Tracy. Maybe he can answer that one. Come on, Johnny, you might as well talk. Who robbed that payroll truck? Let me handle him, Tracy. I think I can make him talk. We're waiting, Johnny. Homicide, Dick. Just got the call. You better step on it. 2240 Lakeview Road. Murder, 9-11 Laurel? 9-11 Laurel? That's where I live. My mother. You said murder. My mother's there. What's happened to her? I gotta get to my mother. I've gotta find out who robbed that payroll truck. Who are you shielding, Johnny? I gotta get out of here. Who held up the truck? Flip Gordon. Your mother's all right, Johnny. But you just said that... The only way I could get you to talk and free yourself at the same time. All right, boys, clean up Johnny and send him home. Tell the chief it's okay. And pick up Flip Gordon. Yes, sir. Dirty trick to play on a kid, but I knew he was innocent. That was the only way I could make him talk. And you gave me the idea. I must be improving. All the time. Hey, Dick. How about Tess? Holy smoke, our dinner date. She must be starved. Make yourself comfortable, Tess. will only be a few more minutes. Dick, I... teacher named Dorothy Stafford, about 40 years old, quiet, few friends, lived a couple of houses down the block. Any trace of the murder weapon? No. The only thing we found so far is Miss Stafford's handbag. Who reported it? Mr. Hill, but he wasn't the first to reach the body. Oh, she's over here. Miss Stanley, this is Detective Tracy and Detective Patton. How do you do, Miss Stanley? Did you see anybody in the block before you found Miss Stafford? No. A friend drove me home from work and let me out on the corner. I didn't see or hear anyone until I got right here. And then these people started coming out of their houses. Just a few seconds earlier, it would have been me lying there. Nobody would have any reason to kill Miss Stafford. Could have happened to any of us. Only a fiend could have slashed it like that. Have one of the boys take Miss Stanley home. Get their names. All right. Miss Stanley? What's your name, Miss? Pat Chandler. at the Lyceum Hall. Say, that's where she was coming from when she got knifed. Twenty dollars and some silver. Well, that rules out robbery. The neighbors are right. We've got a maniac to find. Identification card. Balance of seventeen hundred dollars. No recent withdrawals. dollars in small bills and put in Street Sweeper's trash can. Corner of Lakeview and Ash at 8 tomorrow night. Splitface. I can spell better than that. He spells the important words all right. Yeah, Mr. Splitface knows how to spell $500. Dick. Tracy? What time is it? Why, it's a little late, Tess. It's almost 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock? Guess that's all for tonight, Pat. We may as well go home. Thank you.
one thing, it's another. Dick Tracy residence. Mrs. Carraway speaking. Who? Oh, hello, Mr. Patton. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of calling Mr. Tracy now. He didn't get home till 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. I'm sure he's exhausted. He's in a coma. He's in a coma. Oh, uh, just a minute, Mr. Patton. Just a minute. Morning. Morning. Hello, Pat. Dick. Anything wrong? The chief wants us over at the mayor's office. Too sweet. I'll pick you up right away. Mayor's office. I'll be ready. Mayor's office. Hmm. Junior had his breakfast yet? Oh, an hour ago. He's upstairs in his room, working on a very strange case. I'll see what he's up to. What have you got there? Something mighty funny happened around here last night. That so? Yeah, there was a prowler in the house. Anything missing? Yeah, plenty. Any clues? I'm afraid I'll have to fingerprint you. Hey, you don't suspect me. Mrs. Carraway says a lot of stuff is missing from the icebox. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. Look at these, Dick. You've got me dead to rights, officer. You better talk. Might as well come clean. It'll go a lot easier on you if you do. And on your accomplice, too. How'd you know I wasn't alone? Lipstick. Ted? Yeah. But I'm taking the rap. It was too late to go to a restaurant, so we... We waited at the kitchen. Oh, heck. You confess too easy. I thought this case would take me all day. So you could stay out of school? Let's go. Oh, good morning, Mr. Patton. Good morning. Hello, oh, Pat. Be right with you. We've got to hurry, Dick. Hi, Junior. Any new crimes? Why, I've got to go to school. <laughs> well, land sakes, aren't you even going to have your breakfast? I'll get a cup of coffee downtown. Come on, Pat. See you. Bye, Mrs. Carraway. Goodbye. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning. What's happened? The mayor will explain. Here, Tracy, read this. Came special delivery a half an hour ago. Wrap up $10,000 in small bills and put in Street Sweeper's trash can at corner of Davidson and 9th Street. At 11 tomorrow night, it'll be slashed to pieces. Split face. The same handwriting and the same words misspelled. Well, if you know the handwriting, of course you can tell me who Splitface is. The man who killed Miss Stafford. Just a moment. Did your honor know Dorothy Stafford? Why, well, I, I can't recall. Why? Did she get one of these extortion letters? Yes. For $500. That's what's strange. An extortionist doesn't usually demand 500 from one victim and 10,000 from another. You mean he'd operate in one bracket? That's right. Well, what are you going to do, Chief? Now, don't worry, Your Honor. We'll assign bodyguards to you immediately. Bodyguards? Those are the fellows that always shoot second. I guarantee your safety. You do? I suppose if you don't live up to your guarantee, you'll bring your resignation over to my funeral. Now, Mayor. Now, look! I only want one thing, and you know what that is. Split face. I've gone through every crank letter and extortion message in our files. There's nothing that even looks like the writing of this split face. Think of anything more on Miss Stafford? Uh, one thing. Going through her personal effects and business papers, I kept coming on to the name of Wilbert Thomas. Who is he? Well, that's what's funny. I asked all our school teacher friends, and none of them ever heard of him. But he's in the phone book, and I've been calling him all night. Let's go out to his house. We can wait for him if he hasn't arrived by the time we get there. That's the number. Let's see what that dog's howling about. There's a car out. 
out there. That dog is in the next yard. Yeah. Evidently, nobody home there either. Like the Stafford woman. Throat slashed, night cuts, and face and chest. I'm only a couple of minutes late. Call headquarters. I want the neighborhood combed. Right. Look. He stepped in some oil in that driveway. When you phone, get the car and cruise around until you spot me. Right. on the carpet. A man named Jones lives here. I'll keep him busy in the study. Continue looking the place over. You're alone in the house tonight, Mr. Jones. Yes. My daughter is visiting relatives out of town. Our cook goes home every night. Would you sit down? Thanks. Very unusual for me to spend an evening at home like this. I own the Paradise Club. Did you ever know a woman named Dorothy Stafford? That's the school teacher who was killed. Yes. I never heard of her until I read about the murder. Did you ever hear of a man who calls himself Splitface? <laughs> no. Who is he? The killer. I'm concerned about your safety, Mr. Rollins. My assistant. I think we'd better leave a police guard with you. I don't think that'll be necessary. Apparently, you had this man cornered in my backyard and he ran through the house to get away. He's not likely to come back. He's not in the house now, anyway. are all clean. Maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he is and maybe he isn't. But right now we're going back to the Thomas house. Oh, 
crowd, Nick. Hello, Manning. I thought I had him, but I ran second. Too bad. It's Thomas, all right. What'd you find on him? The usual stuff. A wallet, around 50 bucks, medium price watch. Dick Tracy reporting. Oh, it is. Well, I was told of this lovely to call me. I was afraid you wouldn't talk to me if I gave my right name. Did I apologize for last night? No, you didn't. But I suppose I'll have to forgive. I won't think I'm really forgiven unless you let me make up for it tonight. Tonight? Gee, that'd be swell. Good, Tess. I'll call for you early. We'll dine, we'll dance. Maybe we'll even look at the moon. You can't fool me for a minute, Dick Tracy. I know you're not going out for fun. You're going out for work. And if you examine the moon, it'll be for fingerprints. You're wrong, Tess. Work's forgotten. And besides that, I have something interesting to tell you. You know what? Tracy is crazy about you. What about your day with the mayor? The mayor? He's just a figurehead. Nobody pays any attention to him. It doesn't sound like you, Tracy. Pick you up at eight. So, I'm just a figurehead, eh? So no one pays any attention to me, huh? Of course not, Your Honor. I mean, won't you sit down? So my life's in danger and no one pays any attention to me. No wonder our citizens are being slashed or ribbons by some maniac. Your Honor, we're all doing everything possible. Have you forgotten if I don't put $10,000 in some trash can tonight that I'm going to join Miss Stafford and Wilbur Thomas in the morgue? We've checked the movements of Thomas. Thomas is dead. Have you checked the movements of this split face? That's what I want to know. We have a suspect. I've told the mayor about Owens. He wants us to arrest him. If we do, an attorney will get him out in a few hours. All we'll do is put him on his guard. Has your honor ever met Owens or Thomas? I may have. I meet lots of people. I'm a popular man. But remember, I expect action. And before 11 o'clock tonight. like no soap. I've been standing here for three hours. My feet are killing me. You didn't really expect them to show up, did you? Why not? We put the package in the can, just as the note instructed. I don't think Splitface is especially interested in the package of money. You mean Stafford, Thomas, and the mayor were all marked for murder, whether they paid or not? Right. The lucky Stafford got a note asking five on it. She didn't pay it and was killed. Thomas got one and paid, a thousand dollars. He was killed. Sane or crazy, there's some central idea behind it. Some spring that ties all these people together. That's encouraging. What am I going to tell the mayor about tonight? Congratulate him on being alive. And ask him where he ever encountered Stafford, Thomas, and Steve Bones. We might as well go. the booking boys. That's all for tonight. I hope you made a reservation. No. It would only take a minute to call and I... Quiet. I didn't want anyone to know me here. Oh, oh Mr. Tracy. Good evening. Oh, Jules. Uh, a table for Mr. Tracy. It's a pleasure to see you, Mr. Tracy. This way, please. I see what you Unknown, I don't know. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Owens around this evening? I'm not sure, but I'll find out, Mr. Tracy. Who is Mr. Owens? 
he owns the place. I ran into him last night. All right, stop being so mysterious and tell me why we're here. I'll let you know as soon as I find out myself. Mrs. Tracy asked me about your father. He did. All right. Tracy, I'm Judith Owens. Oh, you were asking about my father? Why, yes. Oh, this is Miss... How do you do? I'm so happy to know you, too. I've been away for a few days, but when I came home this morning, my father told me about your visit to the house last night. Your father has good nerves. That experience would have terrified a lot of people, but he took it right in stride. I'm certainly glad you were there. But, but do you think it was entirely an accident that the killer ran through our house? That's what I've been asking myself. Where's your father now, Miss Holmes? Uh, he's not here tonight. Is he at home? No. No, and right after he left, I, I saw a man walking through our garden. And I was frightened, so I jumped in my car as quickly as possible and came right to the club. Would you let me have the key to your house? Well, well yes, of course. Darling, I'm terribly sorry. Do you mind waiting? Oh, no, you're not going to leave me here. Yeah. Not me. I'd feel safer with you. I don't expect to find anyone around here now. I got her key so I could make a thorough search of the house while they're both out. Well, then I'll help you. <laughs> don't worry about being polite. You go first. What are you doing up here? I? Oh. I am Professor Linwood J. Starling, astrologist, doctor of the occult sciences. How long have you been up here? Time and space are beyond human conception. Cut out the double talk. I'm from police headquarters. Obviously. Well, I've been here since uh, darkness fell, meditating, communing with my soul, studying the course of the stars. 
Sagittarius. Did you see anyone cross this roof a moment ago? No. Oh, but I wouldn't have unless he flashed momentarily across the section of the heavens at which I was looking. You see, I'm a man who knows how to concentrate. Where do you live? All right, go ahead. Let's have a look at it. Go ahead. I suppose you'd like to prowl around a bit? Any objections? None. Being a doctor of the mystic sciences, I'm used to the persecutions of the police. I'll bet you are at that. While you're amusing yourself, you won't mind if I return to my telescope. Oh, now the stars will be there a long time, and I may be only a few minutes. And I might want to chat if I find something interesting. Have a chat. Over here. It's more centrally located. And you can keep an eye on me. Stupid fools, the police. If they had my knowledge of the occult and this crystal ball, there'd be no need of detectives. In it, I can see anything. And there wouldn't be any crooks either. Because you could look in there and foresee what's at the end of the line for them. Might discourage them. Blood drips from two. So you didn't see anybody cross the roof. Maybe you ought to take another look at that crystal ball. Blood drips from two. What? Blood drips from two knives. But there will be 12 more. 14 people. Men and women. Rich and poor. I see 14 people. And all of them are dying. Yes. When the last of the 14 is dead, the cycle will be complete. But now... Now I see a 15. He is... He is... Well, mow me down. He's having his fortune told. Well, whatever we were doing, it's over now. What do you mean? The professor here was telling me some very interesting things when you crashed in and snapped him out of it. I don't believe it. I couldn't have told you anything. I don't even know what you're looking for. This is one of the things I'm looking for. And I found it without the help of your crystal ball. Under your mattress. You probably also put it there. The man I chased across your roof put it there. Well, I... I don't know anything about it. I never saw it before. Maybe if we take him down to headquarters and put him in another trance, it'll refresh his memory. Just a minute. You boys better stay around until we send somebody up to fix the lock on his door. Right. This is Professor Starling, Tess. Take a good look and tell me if you ever saw him before. Of course, you've never seen me before, have you? Tess. Look at me, Tess. Are you sure you never saw him before? I I'm positive. Take him to headquarters. Have this checked by the medical examiner. We want to know if it's the weapon that killed Miss Stafford and Thomas. Okay, see you later. Let's go, Professor. acted like you were hypnotized. Oh, that's ridiculous. Say, who was that man, anyway? The professor? Uh-huh. He's a doctor of the mystic sciences and a darn good hypnotist. Well, do you think he's split face? You're the one to answer that. You saw a split face and owns his hallway. Oh, but that horrible scarred face. Discount that. It could be a trick makeup job. Oh, well, then Owens, too, could be split face. Exactly. And we're going right back to the Paradise Club. What for? I'm going to make Judith Owens producer, Father, so you can get a look at him, too. Yeah. 
You can bring our dinner now. Dinner? We are getting ready to close. Everybody in the kitchen has gone home, but I can bring you some coffee if you wish. Let's have some. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I've been trying to reach you at headquarters. Did you see anyone at the house tonight? Yes, but they saw us first. They got away. Oh, I'm so worried. I, I don't understand what's going on. Now Dad has disappeared. What makes you think so? Well, he hasn't come in all evening, and he's not at the house. Where was he supposed to go when he went out tonight? Uh, Dad likes to uh, gamble. Yes, he has a, a club uptown and, a, and an apartment. I suppose he was there last night, too? Maybe we should drop over there. Oh, no, 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 it wouldn't do any good. He, he left there at 9 o'clock to come here. That's what worries me. Well, remember to give me the address. I may look in there later anyway. Well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I... Um, I'll go with you. Uh, my nose can stand a little powder, too. Oh, uh, but I was going to make a telephone call. Did you think of someplace else your father might be? No, no, I was uh, going to call some friends and make arrangements to stay the night with them until I heard from Dad. Until we know who Split Face is, you wouldn't be safe even with friends. Anyway, it won't be necessary to make a call because I'm taking you with me. I'm under arrest? Let's call it protective custody. But, but jail. I didn't say anything about jail. Where then? Maybe I can take you home with me. Well, how cozy. I've got a housekeeper who's also a good cook. And we'd better be going. Yes, because we'll have to stop by my place long enough for me to pack a bag. Pack a bag? You going someplace? Mm-hmm. I've had a hankering for some of Mrs. Carraway's good cooking. Besides, I wouldn't want Miss Owens to be lonesome. Well, I've looked through all the books, and I can't find a picture of the man that jumped out of Owens' closet. Begin at page one of volume one and go through them again. You'll have to stop and study each picture. Well, I did. But you can't expect to find a picture that looks exactly as he did last night. We might have one that was taken before he got that scar. Just had a call from the mayor. He says he doesn't remember ever meeting Stafford or Thomas, and only knows Steve Owens vaguely as being a nightclub operator. You know, I think Owens is split face. Didn't Dick show you a picture of him? No, for the simple reason that there aren't any. Owens' daughter says he has an aversion to having pictures taken. Please, it's bad luck. Strange his disappearing right after Splitface jumped you in his house. It's strange how well his daughter's holding up. After all, she admits that he might be murdered. Hey, look. I found a surgical supply dealer who admits selling three of these to an undertaker on Pine Street. What would an undertaker want with a surgical instrument? They use them for postmortems. We better both go right out there. You stay with the pictures, Tess. Getting any split face with customers. Hey, maybe he's split face. Good afternoon. May I help you? Well, from the homicide squad. Oh, I'm sure there have been no irregularities. I have burial certificates. That's for all right. I just want you to take a look at this. Oh. A dealer says it's one of three he sold you recently. Yes. Yes, I believe it is. Strange. They all disappeared soon after I bought them. Do you think one of your employees stole them? No, no. I have a small establishment and I do most of the work myself. Where did you keep the knives? I'll show you. I have as fine a collection of caskets as there is in the city. Well, congratulations. Uh, thank you. I do most of my work in here at night. And this door is frequently left open? Oh, yes. And I suppose if the telephone rings, you have to go into the front office to answer it, that right? Yes. That would make it pretty easy for anyone to wait until you were called to the front office, then slip in and steal the knives. Yes. Yes, it would. Now, this is where I kept the knives. Careless of me, perhaps, but one doesn't expect thieves in a place like this. It is a strange place for a murderer to come for a weapon. A murderer? Oh, dear me, I am sorry. Did you ever know a man who calls himself Spitface? No. I can't believe Spitface would come here only to obtain a weapon. What do you mean? Maybe you were number one on his list. And some lucky accident frightened him away when he came to kill you. Wait a minute. What about Professor Starling? Do you know him? Oh, no, but I read in the papers that one of the knives was found in his room. 
Isn't he the murderer? I don't know. Goodbye, Mr. Dethridge. I shall not speak except on advice of counsel. I hope you boys haven't been annoying the professor. <laughs> the shoe's on the other foot. He's got me ready to confess to anything. How long have they been questioning you? Time and space are beyond human conception. Leave it with me for a while. Right. Okay. Relax, Professor Starling. Those fellows mean well, they just get too enthusiastic. Might as well relax. Let you and I play a word game. Get our minds off this for a minute. Don't class me with the morons who usually fall into your net. I know all about your word games. If you told us the truth, the word can't trip you? Come on, Professor. Two minutes of play, and I promise you won't be bothered for the rest of the day. Go ahead if you think it'll get you anything. I'll say a word, then you speak the first word that comes into your mind. Light. Dark. Fish. Water. Snake. Grass. Hot. Cold. Table. Chair. Knife. Knife. Surgeon. Blood. Stain. Extortion. Letter. Man. Women. Deathridge. Deathridge. There's no such word. What does it suggest? Nothing. Thanks ever so much, Professor. You've helped me more than you realize. Take care of the Professor. And leave orders he's not to be disturbed again today. Right. Groggy, Dick. I've been through these books a half a dozen times. Then skip it. As soon as I've had a word with Pat, we'll go out to the house for dinner. Hello, Pat. Hello. What did you get out of it, Pat? Well, he tripped over the critical words like uh, knife, extortion, death ridge. I think he knows our undertaking friend, at least by name. Anyway, I'm going to bring them face to face. Do you want me to bring death ridge down here? Yes. But we'll let the professor worry for an hour or so first. Get something to eat. Then pick up that switch. Call me at the house as soon as you have him. Okay. See you later, Ted. Bye. Nobody's coming around here without me knowing it. Well, good work, Junior. What have you got to report? No strangers called today, or Miss Owens didn't go out. after lunch so I could pack some dresses. I'm sorry. We'll go over there this evening. I don't want to go there at night. Then we'll go in the morning. I have nothing to wear in the morning. Dinner's ready. Anything wrong between you and your guest? No. Too bad. I'll see if I can't stir up something. Let's get dinner. I've uh, changed my mind. I'd like to go home and get my clothes now if you'll go with me. Right away. Fourteen. What comes in groups of fourteen? What in the world are you talking about? The professor. I'm thinking about his cycle of fourteen. Men and women, rich and poor, all dying. Oh, well, that could be most anything, from a family dinner to uh, two poker games. Dick Tracy's residence. Oh, yes, Chief. Chief Brandon. Thanks. Hello, Chief. We still haven't heard anything from Pat. And Deathridge doesn't answer his phone. I'll run right over there. Right away. I have to run downtown, but I won't be long. What about my clothes? We'll get them later. Can I go with you, Dick? I'm depending on you to watch things here.
slug me from behind. Pat said you were on the way to the office. Deathridge dead, huh? Yeah. I came down to get the professor. I want to take him out there and show him Deathridge. Although this sure gives an airtight alibi. Not quite. What? The professor was released on a writ of habeas corpus. When? An hour or so ago. That's why I wanted to see you tonight. shouldn't have come back here. I've been in jail for 24 hours. I know that, you fool. I sent the lawyer I got you out. Oh, well, why did you want to get me out? I wanted you out before you talked anymore. 14 will die, you said. But you were wrong. 15 will die. 15? What do you mean, I? 15. Because I can't take a chance on you any longer. All those years, thinking. Thinking of nothing except paying them back, getting even. Do you think I'm going to let you stop me? I'm not trying to stop you. What have I done to stop you? I know about those rotten letters you've been writing. I didn't care. Until they brought the cops to your door. I admit that I wrote them, but it was an easy way to get the money, and it didn't hurt you any, not as long as you were going to kill them anyway. I'll give you half the money. I got a thousand from Thomas, and now there's death rich. You pay. No, there isn't death rich. I paid him a visit tonight. Funny. They saw me... You look just like you look now. No. No, don't. Don't be frightened. This knife is very sharp. You won't hurt. Not like when I got this face. It wasn't done so nice. Besides, people won't have to look at you. I'm turned sick at the sight of you. No, it's no good killing me. She saw you. She knows you. She'll identify you. See, what's all this nonsense about me telling you who Split Face is? I'll come to that in just a moment. The professor was the extortionist, true enough. It totals a thousand dollars, and it's made up of the exact number of fives, tens, and twenties that Wilbur Thomas drew from the bank. The professor and Split Face were partners? I doubt it. But the professor knew Split Face, maybe from prison, and he was wise to him. He saw a chance to pick up some money. Well, what's all this got to do with me telling you who Split Face is? The professor said that 14 people, men and women, rich and poor, were marked for murder. Did he make any statement before he died? But 14 people, in such varied financial circumstances, and of both sexes, would have to become associated in only one place that I can think of. That would be a jury box. Twelve jurors and two alternates. 
Did you ever serve on a jury in a criminal trial, Your Honor? Well, uh, yes. Can you remember the year you served as a juror? Well, I was in the grocery business. Now, let me think. It was the year we moved from Larchmont to... Can you remember who was being tried? Well, I recall the case perfectly. The, the, the defendant was a criminal. He stabbed his sweetheart to death. That sounds like the Alexis Banning case. Now it all comes back to me. Alexis Banning is the name. He was crazy then. Why? When we brought in the verdict, he screamed he'd kill us all. Put out a general alarm for Alexis Banning. He is split-faced. <laughs> news bulletin. The police have identified the maniac killer who has been terrorizing the city. He is Alexis Banning, alias Splitface. Well, he was convicted after of that there should be no objection to my leaving this charming little jail. People are asked to be on the lookout. No, I'm sure it'll be all right. Only if your father decides to come out of hiding, it would be nice if he'd get in touch with Mr. Tracy. Well, good night. Good night. I've got a phone, Dick. I'll talk to him. I want to report on his house guest. Okay. If you want me, I'll be up in the lab. I'm checking some fingerprints from Billy Brown's piggy bank. Looks like we got his old man red-handed this time. Uh, Mr. Tracy, please. Hello, Dick. This is Ted. Oh, you guessed that, huh? What's the matter? This is Splitface, Tracy. Splitface, you hear? Call off your cops and quit trying to interfere if you ever want to see a girl alive again. That's why I called the police. He must have been in trouble. Which way did the car go? Down Elm towards the waterfront. Thanks.
see. What are you looking around here for? I'm not looking for anything. Just playing. I play on this old board all the time. Say, I know you now. I saw you through the window at Tracy's. Now, you don't want to run away. So you hid in my car and came along. That's fine. You just doubled my grip on Tracy. Well, town. I'm afraid we missed one of Junior's clues. I don't think so. There's some old abandoned docks along here. Maybe split by some setting for them. Now, if Tracy does what I say, you've got nothing to worry about. I'll be back in a minute. I warn you, don't try to get away. Junior, how did you get here? I'm on the back of the car. Oh, you shouldn't have. safely locked up and photographed this time. No, the scar was real. He got it in a fight with another convict. Served two extra years for it. Right. Thanks. Good night, Chief. 
Okay, Tess, I'm through with the report. Let's eat. Eat? Didn't say that a moment too soon. I'm dying of starvation. Come on, Junior, disentangle yourself from those guns. Hey, Dick, a taxi driver was just shot and tossed out of his own cab on 18th and Main. I'm sorry. Will you take Junior home? Here we go again. Come on, Junior. That's what I said. Dick Tracy has got to be killed. The syndicate has just put up $10,000 for his scalp. I'm getting the best gunman in the country to turn the trick. Who? <laughs> Why, Flat Top, of course. Yeah. He ought to be on his way over here right now. I'm expecting him any minute. So long, Lou. You wanted me. Here I am. That's right, Flat Top. Sit down, boy. Flat top. I suppose you'll be interested to know that I've got the, the highest paying job in the country for you. Yeah, I thought it was something pretty big when you wouldn't tell me over the phone what it was. <laughs> I was afraid that if I told you over the phone what it was, you might get scared and back out. Listen, you big windbagger, you calling me yellow? No, no, flat down. Take it easy. <laughs> I was only kidding. I don't think it was very funny. Flat top, I was just using a little psychology to kind of test you out so that you couldn't refuse. And then we'll cut out the psychology stuff. First, I want to know what the job pays. Next, I want to know what the job is. The job pays a cool $10,000, flat top. Ten thousand dollars. You must want me to knock off a whole army post. <laughs> For ten grand, I might even try. <laughs> you get five thousand in advance, flat top, and five thousand when the job is completed. Okay. Okay, what's the job? The syndicate has just put up ten thousand dollars for the killing of Dick Tracy. What's the matter, Flat Top? Aren't you going to take it? <laughs> Killing Dick Tracy will be the greatest fun I ever had. That's the way I like to hear you talk, Flat Top. Darling, it certainly is good to have you home for a change. Honey, you have no idea how nice it is to be here and relax with you. That's the nicest thing you could have said. And that dinner you cooked tonight, that's the best I've ever tasted. From anybody else, I'd consider that a compliment. But since you're the great Dick Tracy and never have time to come home for meals, the only thing you can compare my cooking with is the hamburgers and hot dogs and coffee that you manage to eat between cases. Now, now, Tess, I think you're exaggerating a little bit. Exaggerating? Why, even when we went away on our honeymoon, you left me. For three days, I didn't know where you were. Well, could I help it that Killer Randon started operations right where we were? Well, I certainly hope you're going to stay home tonight. I am, honey. And just to prove it, I'm going to get rid of this gun. At least that's a step in the right direction. Are we expecting company tonight, Tess? No, I wonder who it could be. Well, it's probably Sam Ketchum. If it's anybody from police headquarters, believe me, I'm going to make life miserable for them. Ah, oh, Tess. Yes? Is Mr. Dick Tracy in? Yes, who's calling? I'm Bordeaux with the fingerprint department down at headquarters. Oh, no. Don't tell me it's business again. <laughs> Mrs. Tracy, believe me, this isn't for business. It's a pleasure. This way, please. Two men from headquarters to see you. Hey, copper. Tracy, you won't be needing this gun any longer. You're coming with us. <laughs> Darling. Darling. You killed him. <laughs> you killed my husband. Take it easy, lady. You'll live longer. Mrs. Tracy. Your husband ain't dead. 
yet. He'll be coming to in a few minutes. When he does, he's coming along with us. Well, 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 Dick Tracy. You're the most valuable thing I have. Right, Mo? Yeah. You got five grand for them even before you kill them. That's right, Tracy. And I get 5,000 more when they see you're dead. Gosh, what up? Thank grand. That's not bad, isn't it? Well, you know something, Moat? I don't think I'm a very good businessman. What do you mean? Well, I was offered 10 grand for the job, and I took it. You know, if they wanted to pay that much right off, maybe they'd be willing to go higher. Hey, copper, cut the noise. I'm trying to think. Yeah, Tracy. Do not bother, flat up, see? Ah, look, boss. Who we'll strangled Tracy with his own tie? Now I'll let him alone. After all, I got 5,000 for him before I even saw him. Copper, you're pretty lucky. What are you gonna do, flat up? Uh, I got a good idea. my private phone flat top. How many times have I told you never to use it? I got news for you, Namkin. I got Tracy. Just picked him up less than 15 minutes ago. Good. Well, I've got another $5,000 for you when I know he's dead. Nam Gibb, I've been doing a lot of thinking. Now, you're the head of a big syndicate, and I know who your partners are. And I'm telling their names out loud so Dick Tracy can hear me. But first, I want to tell him your phone number is 5704. You got that, copper? 5704. My name's Namkip. He's the head of the syndicate. And his partners are Rentnoy and Faber. <laughs> what are you trying to pull, Flat Top? Have you really got Dick Tracy there? Take it easy, Namkip. Uh, hold it a minute. Hey, Mo, take a gag off Tracy. I want him to say a couple of words to my friend here. Hey, come on, Tracy, say something. All right, talk, talk. Look, Fat Top, you may kill me. But you'll never get away with it. No cop killer ever does. That's enough out of you. Put the gag back on, Moat. <laughs> Do you hear that? There's only one guy in the whole world that talks like that. Oh, all right, Fat Top. You, you've convinced me you've got Tracy there. And you'll get the other $5,000 when you prove that he's dead. But $5,000 ain't enough. I want $45,000 more. I've decided this job is worth at least fifty grand. <laughs> and I'm sure you can afford it. Why, you dirty crook, that's, that's nothing but blackmail. Of course it's blackmail. But if I let Tracy go, I've still got the $5,000. And they let me go because I told them your phone number and your name. And I'm going to give him enough more information to put you out of business, see? No, 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 Flat Top. Use your head. Take it easy. Take it easy. Everything is going to be all right. Now, just cool down, Flat Top. I'll, I'll see if I can't raise the $45,000. Just give me your address and phone number. And I'll come right over and we'll discuss the whole thing. Oh, no, you don't. You're not going to send a couple of guys up here to try to take care of me, too. <laughs> I'll call you back in a couple of hours. You better have the dough. Well, you're worth $50,000 to me. A moat. Be sure and treat our guest nice and gentle. Sure, boss. You know, he looks to me as a little bit tired. And he could use some sleep. Hmm. Well, why don't you see he takes a little nap? Sure, boss. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Miss Murphy, it was a terrible shock. Tess phoned me about 20 minutes ago to say that Dick Tracy had been kidnapped in his own home at gunpoint. Oh, it's a terrible thing, Mr. Ketchum, a terrible, terrible thing. 
And to think of Dick Tracy being snatched right out of the arms of his wife, so to speak, and in his own home. Yes, she gave me a rough description of the kidnappers. I've sent down to the Identification Bureau for pictures of everyone answering that description. She should be here pretty soon to look them over. Oh, the poor girl. Yes, she was quite hysterical when she told me how they knocked him out with the butt of the gun. Well, I'd like to get my hands on the man who did this to Dick Tracy. Yes, they're certainly not going to get away with it if it takes the rest of my life. And you can count me in on that too, Mr. Ketchum. Yes, indeed. Oh, come in, Tess. Won't you sit down? Get her a chair. Right here. Damn, it was terrible. Two men took him away, and they said they were going to kill him. Now, don't worry. Our police department, the state troopers, and... Police departments of all surrounding states have been alerted. Nothing's going to happen to Dick Tracy. Oh, no, no, Mrs. Tracy, sure. Don't worry, darling. You know your husband needs a charmed life. Yes, but how long will the charm last? Why, every time he goes out on a, an emergency call, I keep worrying that something terrible might happen. Now, come now. Is that any way for Dick Tracy's wife to carry on? I'm sorry, Sam. I'll do anything I can to help. That's fine. Now, first of all, some of them bring along a few pictures here in a little while, and I want you to look them over. Then we'll start on the trail. Here they are. Oh, thanks, Gillis. There's the pictures right now. Will you look those over? This is one of the men. Hey, Fletta, he's coming too. No, 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 no. Take the gag off. I want to have a little talk with him. Are you kidding? I said take the gag off. Okay, you're the boss. Okay, what do we do now? Well, I thought I'd like to sit and talk a little while with you before I killed you. You know, I've always wanted to have a nice, friendly conversation with a copper. What do you want to talk about? Music? Politics? Books? Or killings? <laughs> You've got a great sense of humor there. Thanks. Now, what do you want? Oh, nothing. Nothing much. I just thought I'd tell you a few things you'd like to know about. Seeing as how I'm going to kill you, it doesn't matter very much. That should be very interesting. Well, I used to have a gang in Cleveland. Working slot machines. A lot of dough in that. Of course, we got knocked off a couple of times. It'll cost a little dough, but we got out of it all right. Why do you have to keep working on that telegraph key? Well, Golden, as a troop leader of the Girl Scouts, it's my job to instruct them on the international code. Oh, Copper, I don't know why you spend so much time with those Girl Scouts when there's so many other things to do. Oh, what do you mean? Well, Freddie asked me to go dancing with him, and uh, he has a friend who's in from out of town who'd like a date. Not interested. And after I left Cleveland, I squared up things in Detroit and came here. And there, Tracy, you have the story of my life. Guys, flat up. I didn't know you'd done all them things. Gee, you really get around. Yes, you really do get around. But you've done so much wrong that your time should be up pretty soon. Speaking of time, why don't you call Lamb Gibb and see if he got your door for you? That's a good idea. He said if he could get it, he'd have it in a couple of hours. Well, if you're going to kill me, do you mind if I have a pencil and a piece of paper? I'd like to write my wife Tess a farewell note. Flat up. That's the silliest thing I ever heard of. You aren't going to let him do it, are you? Sure. His wife seemed like a good kid. Yeah, but she's Dick Tracy's wife. On time. I'll get him a pencil and paper and let him write.
Cut out the racket, Tracy. I'm trying to think. What's the matter? Cut out the tapping. Oh, well, I was just thinking about the letter. I'm a little nervous. Oh. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Condemned man always gets a hearty last meal, so you go ahead and write your letter any way you want. Time, Golden? No, it was a very dull evening. This is the only thing that's new. It's a funny thing. Just before you came in, I, I heard somebody tapping a code next door. What do you mean? Well, listen. Do you hear? Oh, it's probably mice. No. D I C K T R A C Y H E L P. What? Dick Tracy, help. Well, look at the newspaper headlines. Dick Tracy kidnapped. Flat top identified by Mrs. Dick Tracy. Oh, no, look what I wrote down on this pad. Dick Tracy, help. I'm going to police headquarters. Wait a minute, you're not going to leave me alone. I'm coming, too. I guess I'll try Nam Gip again. Tracy, while I'm on the phone. Hello, Nam Gibb. This is Flat Top. Yeah, well, I've got the forty-five thousand dollars for you right here. Yeah, when do I get the dough? Just as soon as you've taken care of Dick Tracy. I'm not killing Tracy till I get it. And I'm not giving you any part of this forty-five grand until Tracy is dead. Put out the stolen, you phony, or I'll turn Tracy loose. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Now, use your head. I'll bring the money right over myself. Just tell me where you are. It looks like we're stuck. I don't kill Tracy unless I get the dough, and you don't give me the dough unless you know he's dead. <laughs> I'll tell you what you do. You come over to 53 Pep. Come alone and give three quick knocks. It's apartment four. If anybody's with you, the deal's off. I'll be right over. You better hurry up. Because I'm not killing Tracy till you get here. That's just the way I want it. Have you finished that letter yet, Tracy? Uh, uh, yes, almost. Well, you'd better hurry up. You've got about 15 minutes to live, 20 at the most. Because as soon as that dough gets here, it's goodbye, Dick Tracy. Are you going to kill him yourself, or are you going to let me do it, flat top? No, I'm going to do it. Ain't that I'm getting paid. That I want to. And if you're a real nice guy, I'll kill you quick. Otherwise, you die real slow. Well, girls, your story sounds true. You say the man who lives in the next apartment looks like this? Yes, yes, that's the one. Oh, yes, that's the man. I'm so glad we found out that he's alive and where he is. Well, Gillis, we'd better hurry. These girls say that they live at 53 Peppin Place in apartment 3. This man is in apartment 4. Now, I'm going over there right away. Be sure you send enough squad cars to cover me. Well, well now, you find Mr. Tracy, and I'll stay here to make sure that nothing goes wrong. I'll see you later. Wish me luck. I will, Sam. Good luck to you, my boy. Good luck, Sam, your boy. Now, ladies, don't worry at all. Everything's under control with Murphy here. Gillis, while I'm on the phone, you better go on downstairs. Operator, give me the squad cards. Hello, Gil Hooley. Is that you? This is Murphy. Now, look, Gil Hooley. Sam uh, Ketchum is on his way to 53 Peppin Place, where Dick Tracy is being held by Flat Top. 
Now, I want you to instruct all your cars to give every aid and assistance possible. Mr. Trace is in apartment four. All right, goodbye. Murphy, I hope Sam Catchum gets there on time. Now, Mrs. Tracy, don't you worry. Everything's going to come out all right. Patrick Francis Xavier Murphy guarantees it personally. Oh, I do feel better. At least I know he's alive. Oh, Mr. Murphy, you're such a wonderful man. Why, I'll bet that without you, the whole police force wouldn't be able to operate. Well, bless your heart, you sweet dear girls. You never said truer words in your whole life. <laughs> Boats, you better start packing our things. Because if we get that dough, we're going to have to leave this town pretty fast. Especially after we bump off Mr. Tracy. Well, you haven't killed me yet, Flat Top. And when you do, you're bound to be caught. There's only one mistake I may have made, and that's not shooting your wife. She's a witness, you know. You ought to be very grateful I'd left her alone. Why not go back there and knock her off, too? No, there's one thing I've never done in my life, and that's shoot a woman. I don't intend to unless I'm forced into it. Okay, play it the way you want it. That's the way I want to play it. Now hurry up and get packed. Laptop, you say Nambig is the head of this whole syndicate? That's right. He's been organizing the top criminal outfits in this town for the past three weeks. <laughs> Every time he gets things rolling, you broke it up. Well, if I've caused him that much trouble and cost him so much money, why don't you try holding him up for $100,000 instead of $50,000? Yeah. Hey, you may have something there. Now, hey, what do you think, Moat? Sure. Wouldn't hurt to try. I'll see what Nam Gibbs says when he gets here. Just don't move, Copper. Hey, Moat, go to the door and open it slow. And keep that gun leveled. All right, shut it. Are you alone? <laughs> I was expecting a reception something like this. Guns and everything. Oh, yeah. I've decided to live a little while longer, so I came alone. But that's real smart of you. In my business, you don't get to be head of a big syndicate until you learn to do things slowly and very carefully. Otherwise, somebody might kill you first. <laughs> so you're an M.G.I.P. Us boys down at the bottom never get to see a big shot like you. Too bad. I don't have much time to get around. All right, all right, let's can the chatter. Where's the dough? That's better. Direct and right to the point, huh? <laughs> I've got the money right here. And I've got Dick Tracy. So I see. Well, who does what? Take that dough out of your pocket real slow and put it on the table. I'll stand over here and cover Tracy and you while Moat counts the loot. <laughs> okay. That's the way you want it? There it is. Gosh, flat top. I never saw so much money in my life. Forty-five grand. Well, give me the money. No, you don't. Not until you kill Tracy. Nam Cube, I've got Tracy, and now I've got the dough, too. What are you talking about? Just this. You raised that $45,000 pretty fast. You and your friends been making a lot of dough out of this town out of crime. If you can afford $50,000, you can afford $100,000, and that's my price. Why, that's ridiculous. Stay where you are, Ramgid. Ramgid, why don't you give Flat Top the $100,000? I'm worth that much to you, Dad. Shut up, Tracy. Flat Top, can't you see? He's only trying to start a fight between us. So you won't kill him. <laughs> don't worry about it. I got him covered, and you too. Now get out of here. And don't come back till you got that 50 grand. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. I got a better idea. I'm taking Tracy out of here so you can't send a couple of your hoods up here to take care of me, see? Flat top. Will you ever grow up? Look, let me write you a check for the complete amount. I got my checkbook right here. <laughs> Flat top, don't make a move. It looks like you got me, Tracy. You all right, Tracy? Yeah. Looks like you really did a good job. 
I don't know why it is, but you seem to have all the fun. It may seem like fun to you, but believe me, I'd rather be home with Tess reading my newspaper. I can believe that. All right, flat top, let's go. Sam, you better call the coroner. Back already, that was the end of Dick Tracy's G-Men. Hope you enjoyed the show. And if you miss one of my shows, go to YouTube under Don O'Malley or Don's Breakfast Cereal Show. Hit like and subscribe and you'll never miss one of my shows. So I hope you join in next time when we show another old movie serial. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay safe. See you next time. Good night.